dark energy. The new dark energy camera just installed on the Blanco telescope. The whole purpose of our, our project is to understand what is dark energy. Dark energy uh, was discovered just uh, less than 15 years ago, actually. In fact, using Your close caption. Oh, yes. Thank you. And it was Thank you. By yes, the fact that the dark energy Thanks. is our name. It's just a name that we give to the phenomenon that's causing the universe's expansion to accelerate. We're not trying to figure out if dark energy exists. We're not trying to find it. We know dark energy exists. We're trying to characterize it. We're trying to understand what it does to us, what it does to the universe, to the to its expansion rate, and to the gravitational attraction of things like galaxies. I work with the Dark Energy Survey, and I am working on CISPI, which is the software end of the camera. And right now, we are in the control room for the camera. As you can see, here are our lovely displays. We're doing a survey, so we want to cover a large section of the sky. Over five years, the Dark Energy Survey will scan 5,000 square degrees of sky far back in time and far away from us in order to measure the distances of supernovae and the distributions of galaxies. Since we're covering a large section of the sky, we've got to move the camera to cover all of it, and we have to track the sky as it moves because the sky moves very fast, and we're doing long enough exposures that if we weren't following the sky as it moved, it would get blurry. Mm. We are at an observatory, and we're looking at the stars, and you don't see the stars in the daylight. So generally, the observers will start working sort of around twilight, around dinner. You can start taking some calibration frames and dome flats. You can do those when the daylight's out. But you can't open the dome till after dark. And so right now, it's about 12.20, and this is very early in the night for an astronomer. And so an astronomer will generally stay here and work until sunrise, when you can't take any more data. Hmm. Every time I come to Saratoga, I realize how special an experience it is. Last night when we were looking up at the sky, and when you can see the Milky Way so clearly, but you know that as a galaxy it's a line. You know that the plane of it is, is a line. And you see it curved across the sky. What else can that do to you but make you feel like you're, like you're on this sphere with with all these other people, with, with the people here on, on the mountain, but everyone else. Like, you know that you're home in so many ways. This job is a whole lot of fun. I've really enjoyed seeing from, at first, all I was seeing was the software, and it was very abstract, and it's been really neat to see first the telescope simulator being built at Fermilab, and then just to come here to Chile and be able to actually see the telescope take data, it's really exciting. In some sense, the purpose of our experiment and what we'll learn by understanding more about what dark energy is, is to find out about the fate of the universe. What is going to happen into the future? Is the universe really going to keep expanding faster and faster and faster or not? Over 300 people, from professors to engineers to students and postdocs, putting together the dark energy survey and all the infrastructure from simulations to theory and, and everything that went into making the survey possible. One might think, oh, I'm, you know, I'm just one little piece in this large process. But when you think again about what we're exploring, when you think about the images that we're going to take, when you think about how far and away and how far back in time we're going to look, you can't help but feel like you're a part of something that's really important, that's helping us see not just about the past of the universe, but the past of us, where, where we've been and, and really where we're going to go. Okay. Um, by the Hi. way, um, Ronaldo yeah. is 